Hi all, welcome back to this video series, Learning Apex the Fun Way. In case if you are joining in new, feel free to check out the previous videos that we have uploaded under this playlist, Learning Apex the Fun Way. Since we have understood the two out of the three collections that we have, now we can move on to the next collection that we have, which is nothing but map. Now, what exactly is this map? In case if you are familiar with any OOPS concepts, you might have known that map is a combination of a key and a value pair. Just like how we did for the other concepts, we'll also take a simpler example that we see in our day-to-day -day lives. We'll take the example of a college locker or a gym locker to understand this map concept. So what is a map? Map is a, another collection that we have and it is little different from what we have seen so far. List and set are pretty much same. Only the major difference that you would see in your list and set is list would allow duplicates and set would not allow duplicates. Map is a little different. It has a key and a value pair. So let's understand that with this exam. So think of this locker. Now, let's say if this is your locker, let's say I'll name it as 202. This is 201 and this is 203, 204, 205. Assume that for time being, you have this locker 202 allocated to you. Now, in order to access this 202, you need to have a key. You'll get the key and open this lock and that is where you would be able to access the locker. Now you have an option to place the things that you have inside your locker. You might have placed your bag inside your gym locker and go ahead and do your exercise. That is how your locker would work. You are assigned with a key called 202 where which you are given a key. With that key you will open this lock and that is where inside the locker you would have a value. Now what is this map? Map is like this. Once you have a key you have an option to access the value cut. So that is why they call it as a key and a value pair. All right. So once you have the key, you have an option to access the content within your locker. Now, if you see here again, our map is again a collection. You would have key and a value pair for other people's also. If I have to put that in a programming language, if I say key and a value pair, I need to tell the system that what kind of a data type it is. So if I have to define the key as an integer, I need to tell the system that yes, I'm defining the key as an integer. And my value that I'm putting inside it, maybe it could be another integer or it could be a string. It could be some X, Y, Z. Now, you might ask me, can you give me an example of how can I relate this key with a value? Think of a student attendance. Instead of calling them with their names, you would be called with your role number. So let's say attendance could typically go like this. Role number one is allocated to person A. Role number two is allocated to person B. Role number three is allocated to persons. Instead of calling their name, what they are called with, they are called with their role numbers. So this is a typical example where in which you can make use of your key and a value pair. If I have to talk in programmatical language, one is a role number that is associated to a person A, one is a integer, and the name of a person is a string. Name of the person could be Suresh, Ramesh, Sita, Geeta, right? So it could be a name of a person. So it would go in a string. So if you see, we have a key and a value. So the key is role number and you can get to know the person's name just by looking at the register. If you look at the register, you would have role number one and the corresponding name, role number two and the name of the person here. So this is how you can pretty much understand how the map has been basically designed. So that is where you would see a syntactical difference between your list and set compared with your map. So map would have two data types, one for your key, another one for your value. Since we have understood how exactly the map is different from the list and set. Let's go back to the Salesforce and understand the syntax of our map. Do not worry in case if you are thinking that map is a too much of a complex topic. Do not worry, we'll learn it from something that we already know. So now what I'm doing, I'm creating a map here and I want to set the key as of type integer and the value of type. When I say type, the data type as string. How can I write the syntax of my map? Again, what I'll do, I'll get the basic syntax that I know, copy paste it just to Make sure that we have everything at one place to understand the syntax of our map. So what I'll write, I'll write map here, just like how did for list set. Then I'll put this, then I'll write map. First, I need to declare the data type for my key. What is the data type of my key? Integer. So I'll simply write it down how we did for list or set. I'll put a comma because I need to specify the value data type also. It is not just key that the map is holding, it is holding key and a value. So I will put a comma to separate the data type of my key and the data type of my value. What is the data type of our value that I've defined here in my example? So it is string. So it could be anything 
So for this exercise, I'm taking the value as my string. So now what is the next step? We need to write a variable name. Since it is a map that we are creating, I'll put it as map demo. Put a equal to sign. And since it's a user defined data type, what I'll be doing? I'll be putting my new keyword, telling the system that yes, I'm going ahead creating with a new memory block, a new user defined data type that I have created just now, which is of type map. And it is taking integer as a key and a value as a string. So this is how you would create your map. Now, if you see here, this syntax doesn't vary much with your set syntax. In your set, you have single data type. In your map, you would have two data types. One is for your key, another one is for your value. Now, if I want to add items into my map, how can I do that? Remember that your map would pretty much look like your attendance sheet, where in which you would have roll numbers and you have a value associated to it. So you would have a key and a value. So key could be anything. As of now, we have declared it as one and we would name it as Anil as the first member. And two, we would put Suresh and three, we would put it as Ramesh. So this is what I want to create it in my map. What if I want to create the same structure using Apex? Now let's understand what would happen if Salesforce processes this line number 20. So you would understand that it needs to create a memory block which can hold onto a map. And we have key and a value pair, keys of type integer and values of type string. So that is what would happen. So this is how the memory block has been created. Now how to add values into it. So simply write your variable name dot this time Instead of writing add, we need to write put. So this is another difference between your list set syntax and a map syntax. Now, what we need to write inside your put, look at your map definition. So it takes integer first and a string. So I'll simply write one because that is the value that I wanted to add first. And then I'll enter the name of a person that I wanted to add into my map, which is Anil. Now, so once that is done, you have added your first type. I'll copy paste this syntax twice because I can proceed with the rest all entries that we have. The second value is Suresh, and the third value is Ramesh. And so this is how you can add items to your map. Now, so this is how you can write it syntactually. Now, how would Apex language basically add items to our map? Now let's see that. Upon creating a map of type map with name map demo, it would proceed with line number 24. What we are asking the system to do, we are asking the system to basically go to this variable name and then add these items to the map. So this is how the map is been created. It would take the key first. It would search for the key value in this entire key column. If nothing is there, it would create a new key and then take that value corresponding to it and assign it to its value column. For time being, we'll park the question of what would happen if there is a repetitive key that is there. We'll get to that point for time being. Let's do the simple thing first and then we'll proceed with the next thing. Now, line number 24 is done. We'll go to line number 25. On line number 25, we are asking the system to create a new key called 2 and add a corresponding value to it. So what would system do? Take this key, search in the entire key column. Do we have any key with the same value called 2? The answer is no. So it would create another new entry. It would add 2 in the key and it would put Suresh in the value column. So line number 25 is done. On line number 26, same story, we are asking it to do it for key called 3. Again, it would take this key, search in the entire key column. Since it is not there, it would create a new, it would assign the corresponding value to it. So this is how it would look like. Now comes the question, what if I repeated the key 2 twice? Instead of writing Suresh, I'll change it as Kanish. Now what would system do? So once the system starts processing line number 27, this is what would happen. It would take this key value. It will go to this entire map key column and searches for the key called two. So this time we have a matching key here. Now what would this map do? So this time, instead of creating a new new entry, it would replace the value that is already there in the system. So since the key is already been recorded, it would take this value and put that in the place of existing value. So it would replace this Suresh as a value and it would put the latest content that we have, which is so now what we can understand from this exercise is whenever there is a key repetition that happens, so the latest entry is the one that takes the precedence. So in the map, this is how it looks like. Need Ganesh and Ramesh. So this is how your map would behave. Now, how can I basically understand how many entries that are there in the map? So how can I prove that items that we have, if there is a key repetition, what would happen? How can I prove that there are only three entries in our map, not four? Again, I'll make use of the 
method that we have discussed previously, which is nothing but our size. This time I'll ask the system, the size of my map demo is, and I'll say map demo dot size. So whatever that we have discussed is true. If the map would allow only unique key entries, our size of my map would be three. If that is not the case, since we have added four items to it, it should display the size as four. Now pause this video in three, two, one, I'll reveal the answer. I hope you might have got the answer right. So let's check this out by running this code. So now I'm not running the entire code because I'm only interested in this debug law and that too, the debug law that we have for this map. So I'll simply select this lines from 23 to 29. I'll click on execute highlight. Now we have a debug log that is generated. I'm only interested in the debug statement. So I'll click, simply check this checkbox which says debug only. Now if you see here, the size of my map demo is three. That is what we have discussed. So since there is a key replacement that is happening, whatever the value that we have, on the latest side would replace the older value. Now, how can I prove that key two is having the value as Ganesh, not Suresh? How can I do that? So that is where I can ask the system to get the value inside that key. So if I have to ask somebody to get something from my locker, I need to give them the key so that they can go to that particular locker, open that key and get the value with which is inside it. Same goes here also. If I have to get the value within the key, so this is a syntax that I need to write to get the value for the key called so all i need to do is write the variable name of my map so this is my variable name and i need to write get because that is where i'm asking the system to get this value that is associated with this key called two so this is the syntax that you need to write so if i write this syntax system would process this and i'll not be able to show it to you so that is why i'm again enclosing it in a system.debug state and again, I'll use the power of copy paste. And this time, instead of writing it as size, I'll simply say value associated with two is. And I'm simply writing value associated with key two is, and I'm printing this value. So whatever that I've told you is true, we will be seeing this value as Ganesh rather than seeing it as demo dot get off. So let's execute this code again. So we'd be seeing two debug logs. One would say the size, and other one would say the value that is associated with this key called two. So I'll click on execute highlighted. Now my debug log is generated. I'm interested in debugs only. So I'll check that checkbox. And if you see the value associated with key two is Ganesh. It is not Suresh because this Suresh value is overwritten with the latest value that we have, which is Ganesh. So make sure that whenever you are adding values to your map, make sure that your key is unique. If not, it would overwrite the values that are already being added to your map. What if I misuse this method called get? Let's see what would happen. What if I ask the system to get something that is not there? My requirement is here to basically check if the key is present in the map or not. So how can we do that? Let's say, let's ask the system two questions. Do you have the key called or that is the first one. And the second one is, do you have, do you have the key called two in map demo? So these are the two questions that I wanted to check. Now, how can we ask the system? So if we cannot directly write, do you have a key called four in your map demo? So system would not understand it. So that is why we have commented it out. So how can we write it in, a, in our Apex language? Simply write your variable name because that is the place where we wanted to check. And in order to check or in order to ask the system if it has that key one or two or three or four, simply write contains key. So this is the method that you need to use. So what does this contains key would do? Contains key would basically ask the system a question saying that, Whatever the value that you pass here, it would go to this entire key column and start searching for that particular. So let's say if I want the system to check if it has a key called four or not. Now it would go to this memory block that we have created with map demo and it would start searching for that key. If it is found, it would return true. It is found in the key column. It would return true. Else it would return false. All right. So now put your guesses, pause this video and guess what would be the output for this line, line number 35. And I'll be enclosing that in a debug log and also guess the output of what would be the output for line number 37. Will it be true or false? In order for us to understand this and see the output for confirmation, I'll be enclosing it in our debug state. Simply I'll write system.debug. Now I, again, I'll use the power of copy paste here. As the map demo has the key called two and I've changed the syntax. Pause this video and keep your answers handy. So in three, two, one, I'll reveal the answer. So I'll copy the entire code this time and click on execute highlighted because I wanted to only execute the map code, 
not the rest all code. So I'll simply click on execute highlighted here. A debug log is generated. I'm interested in debug statements only. So I'll keep this checkbox checked. So now if you see here, these are all the results that we have looked at previously. So when I've asked this question, does map demo contains key called four? It said false because we do not have any key called four. Then I've asked this question, does this map contains key called two? It said true because there is a key that we have. It says two here in our map demo. So this is how we can ask the system a question saying that if you have a key and you want to check if that is present in the map or not, simply use this contains key. What if you want to look at all the keys that are added into our map? So is there any way to do it? Yes, there is a way. What is that one? Simply write your variable name and simply write key set. If you write this one, you'll get to know what all keys that we have in our map. So since this would execute and I'll not be able to show you anything if I do not enclose it in a debug statement. So I'll simply copy paste this debug statement once again to display these values. Is present in map demo. This is the method that you need to use. So this would display all the keys that we have in our map. And what if you wanted to know all the values that are added into your value column? Simply re replace it with values. Key set for displaying all the key values and values to display all the values that we have added into our map. So now let's go ahead and execute this one. A debug log is generated. Check for only debugs because that is what the point of interest is. And these are all the debug logs that we have already discussed. If you look at line number 16, which displays all the list of keys that added to this map table. If you see what are the keys that we have, one, two, and three. So you can see that here. And what are the values that we have added into a valid column? Anil, Ganesh, and Ramesh. So these are all the values that we have added into our value column. So this is how you can play around with your map. Feel free to try it out. That brings us to the end of this collection video. In case if you have any questions slash suggestions, feel free to put that in the comment section. And I'll meet you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.